My new sermon series is going to be, uh, for the next three to four weeks, uh, is making an impact. Making an impact. I believe that's what God is calling us to do. It's what we've been trying to do over these last 32 years. And let me just say, over these last 78 or so years in this corner, uh, this church has always tried to make an impact for the kingdom of God. And so... I want to give you five impact moves that you need to make in 2023, amen, because if you make these five impact moves in 2023, I believe God is going to pour out his blessings on each of us. Matter of fact, as the scripture said in Malachi, that when we do what God has called us to do, he will pour us out of blessing that we won't have room enough to what? receive it. It'd be so awesome and such a blessing. So we are so grateful today as we begin this conversation about five impact moves that you need to make and I need to make for successful 23. In the book of Acts, I want to start there this year. The book of Acts, when you get that, just stand on your feet in honor of God's word. We're going to I'll go to the third chapter of the book of Acts. We're going to start with a credible verse, a very familiar verse to most Christians, and maybe to many of you that it's in, in new to Christianity. This, this, is a, this is a powerful text. And uh, in this text, I believe there are five major impact moves that will bless your new year. Let's look at it. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, and as did John. And then Peter said, look on us, brother, look on us. Look up, come on, look on us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Oh, Deacon Carter talked about that expectation. And Deacon James talked about it when he prayed over pastor before I came out us expecting God to do something in 2023. He looked at them expecting something. Then Peter said, listen, man, silver or gold, I do not have. We left everything to follow Jesus. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the right hand, He helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Born never ever walking before, but he jumped to his feet and began to walk, pulling me through. You may be seated in God's presence. How many believe that it was God that pulled you through in 22? Amen. Yeah. And I believe that if uh, you and me to be blessed in 2023, we're going to ask and trust God to do the same. Our text this morning comes from the book of Acts. It's a book in the New Testament. Uh, The writer of this book, Dr. Luke chronicles the beginning of a new era of God's redemptive plan. He began to chronicle the movement, and read the book of Acts, it chronicles the progression of the New Testament church. And that's who we are. We, we pattern our lives and our rituals and the things we do in ministry after the New Testament paradigm. This, this, new, this, new, this new movement of God, this new dispensation 
uh, this, this, this new way God was going to deal with mankind, he said, I'm going to use the church to be the light of the world. I'm going to use the church to lead folk into a new direction. I'm going to use the church to, to move people from the old things and move them into a new era. Jesus came to establish a new kingdom. And so uh, Luke records Jesus' words before he went back to the Father, right in the first chapter of the book of Acts. I want to read it to you. Acts 1 and 8. This is what Jesus said. He says, but you, church, you, you shall receive power after. Somebody say after. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. This framework that Jesus articulated before he ascended back to the Father, he said, just go and hang out in the upper room, and I'm going to send you power from on high, and you shall be my witnesses in the whole world. Matter of fact, if we broke it down and looked at it in our vernacular, Jesus was saying, hey, you're going to be my witness in your own crib. That's Jerusalem. Did you not know Jerusalem is your own house? You, you, you're going to be witnesses in your own house. It starts, with, it starts in your own crib. Then he says, once you've established uh, what it's like to follow Christ in your own home, then you're going to become a witness in the community. That's the next step. I'm, I'm happy to announce that uh, one of our own, uh, attorney Fred Payne, uh, the new CEO and president of the uh, United Way of Century Indiana, I think he may be the first African-American to lead that organization. Is Fred here today? I don't know if Fred's here today, but uh, uh, he's normally, uh, but he's going to be speaking at the 42nd uh, tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. this coming Friday at Christmas Addicts High School. And so uh, I'm so proud of, of uh, Brother Fred. And, uh, and, you know, we just have so many amazing people that are part of our flock. And so we are looking forward, amen, to his presentation to the whole community on this Friday at Christmas Addicts. You shall be my witnesses in your own crib, in the community, and then go to the city, and then to the country. Matter of fact, you're going to be my witnesses to the whole cosmos, the whole world. It all starts, though, in Jerusalem, and that is where we find Peter and John in our text this morning. We find a brother here in chapter 3 whom they laid daily right outside the church at a gate called Beautiful. That's what I love about my brother. He comes every Sunday. He gets on that bus and uh, he gets in his wheelchair and and he just comes every Sunday. He just comes on in here. He's not just uh, by the church. He's actually in church. And <laughs> church is in him. He's right. They, they, they put him right outside the church. They put him there, but they didn't have what it took to pull him through. It was going to take a miracle of God to what? Pull him through. How many know that you can be at the Holiday Inn but not having no holiday at all? I mean, I mean, Chris, he was at a gate called Beautiful. But there was nothing beautiful about his life. You, you can be at the comfort end, but trying to navigate an uncomfortable life. You can be, amen, let me get some of you big shot rollers. You can be at a five-star resort and still get trumped. 
No joy. No hope. So y'all get that. Like somebody get it and they're going, what? You've got to get to where you can have an amazing relationship with God. The paradox here is that there was nothing beautiful about this brother's life. The Bible said he was born this way. The truth of the matter is, is that each and every one of us is born lame. We come out of our mother's womb not able to walk. And I'm not speaking from a, a physiological point of view, but from a spiritual point of view. Uh, all of us have to learn how to walk, which means we have to be born again. This man's condition, amen, is just an illustration of our spiritual deprivation. We cannot walk unless we have an encounter with God. I don't care how much money you have or how much education you have or how many people know your name. You're not really able to walk and enjoy this life as Christ has designed that it should be enjoyed unless you are walking through him. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father. I have come to give you life and a life more what? Abundant. An abundant life. He was carried. Amen. The Bible says he was born lame. Ah, we must see the revelation that there's a higher illustration here that, that Dr. Luke is trying to get us to see is that all of us at some point were lame. He was carried to church. Every day, but church was not in him. There's a difference between these two prepositional phrases, being at church opposed to the church being in you. So many folk are at church, but church is not in thee, in them. And there are some eternal consequences for just being at church and not making sure that church is in you. Amen. Your name can be on our roll. And we've got hundreds and thousands of names of people who have come through this church. Your name could be on our roll, could be in our wonderful database. But if your name is not written in the book of life, you have missed your mark. And only Christ, through his blood, can write your name in the book of life. So don't just be at church. Make sure church is in you. Amen? Now, the giving of alms and money to the poor was a religious thing to do. It was the Jews knew that in order for them to please God, they had to do some works. And so it was nothing for people to give a few pennies or a few coins to someone who's at the temple gate because that's how they felt good about themselves. That was, amen, part of their ticket. They thought back to the Father. And so it, it was nothing for them to give a little change. And so and over and over they would do that. Why? Because they felt like, hey, if I can just, you know, we said, if I can just be a good person. Can I say something to you? Being a good person is not all you need to be. You need to be a saved person. And when you're a saved person, it will incredibly help you be a good person. But I know a lot of good people in this world. But there in this text are five things I want you to take home. I'm not going to deal with all of them today. We're going to make this into a two-part sermon. But uh, I'm going to start with some of them. It says here in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. That's, I, I want to say this to you, that I believe that prayer, that's the first thing I want you to write down as that impact move in 2023. We need to major more in our prayer. We need to pray more. I need to pray more. Prayer is critical for you to navigate 2023. Pray unceasingly. Pray about everything. Those of you that are watching me that are in college right now, pray about everything. 
keep your focus on your prayer life because your prayer life will help you make better decisions while you're there on the college campus. Your prayer life will help you make wonderful decisions while you're managing this particular department. Your prayer life will help you as you're going down the road, amen, taking goods throughout various communities in your semi. Before you walk into your classroom to teach kids, say a prayer. Say a prayer. Whatever walk of life you are part of, prayer needs to be an impact move for us in 2023. These two Holy Ghost filled brothers are on their way to church in the middle of the day to what? To pray. The last time we saw these brothers before Acts chapter 3, remember Jesus took them to the Garden of Gethsemane and he asked them, Would you just pray with me for what? One hour? And what happened to the brothers? They fell asleep. Jesus was facing Calvary, and he was agonizing in Gethsemane, trying to figure out, God, do I have to drink this cup for Clarence? Do I have to, do I have to go through this? Amen. For hope. For God, what? what how? And, and he said, guys, would y'all just pray? And this was his inner circle. This wasn't all the 12. These were the guys his, that were part of his inner circle, the ones that, that got close to him, John and Peter and, 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 and all those, those three or four fellows that, that he had in his inner circle. He said, would you just pray with me for one hour? And the Bible says they fell asleep. But not in our text in Acts chapter 3. They are now power and prayer warriors. They, something has happened to them. Watch this. I believe that this is not the first time that these two brothers, Peter and John, saw this man. I, I believe they walked by the gate called beautiful quite often, and I believe they did the Jewish thing. They gave an offering. I believe this is not the first time they saw this man begging at the gate called beautiful. I believe they gave it some change, and they kept it moving. But however, there is something different here in chapter 3 about Peter and John. Their walk is different. Their talk is different. Their priorities are different, all because something happened to them in chapter 2. Chapter 2, look at it with me. Verse 1, Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. I believe the difference between Peter and John here in chapter 3 was that something happened in their heart and mind in chapter 2. They had had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's something about, praise God, when the Holy Spirit gets in your singing, when the Holy Spirit gets in your praying, when the Holy Spirit gets in your walk, when the Holy Spirit gets in your witness, you are a new woman, you are a new man. There's something about the Holy Spirit that moves you to another level of worship when it comes to God. How many of those stuff changes when you encounter the Holy Spirit? Your prayer walk change. It's three o'clock in the day. We have morning glory here at New Era Church, 6.30 a.m., and we have evening glory at 9 p.m., but these brothers are hanging out in prayer service in the middle of the day. Three o'clock, headed to the temple to do what? To pray. Why? Because they know that prayer works. How many believe prayer works? Come on. No, don't raise your hand unless you do believe. Do you really believe that prayer works? I'm a believer that prayer works. Now, prayer won't bring everything you want. But prayer will bring everything you need. Have I got a witness? Have a little talk with Jesus. We'll make everything all right. Okay, well, let me see. Damar Hamlin. Defensive back of the Buffalo Bills. Fell with a heart attack after tackling a wide receiver. Fell to the ground. Lying there. Life in between heaven and earth. But what happened when that boy and young man fell down? People begin to what? They begin to what? They begin to do what? Look at that image. 
Look at all those folk praying. Now, before the game, there's two or three of them praying. But now when something traumatic happens, when stuff gets out of control, when you can't, hey man, handle the situation, folk in that circle praying. Some of them folk ain't prayed all week long. Some of them ain't prayed all year long. But what happens, when you get to a place that you can't get through what you're going through, you got to call on God. Look at them. Folk in the stands praying. Folk on the field praying. I was at home praying. Some of you were at home praying. Because prayer works. And they tell me today, Damar sitting up, talking to his mama, talking to his friends, talking to the media. Why? Because prayer works. Prayer works. Amen. Amen. Prayer works. Hallelujah. We're grateful to God that this young man is doing so much better. But I believe things changed because of what happened right there. Prayer is the answer. In 2023, you better hang around somebody who can get a prayer through. <laughs> I'm telling you, Derek, because sometimes you get to the place where you can't pray for yourself. But if you got folk in your life, Folk in your corner, people you know that you know can get a prayer through. When you can't get a prayer through, they are praying for you. In 2023, find some folk that can get a prayer through and build a relationship. Get in that prayer circle. Because Dave Mark couldn't pray for himself at that point. He's between heaven and earth. But somebody had me on their mind took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they took the time to pray for me. What did Moses do before he led the children of Israel across the Red Sea? He what? He prayed. What did Esther do before she went before the king? She what? What did Jesus do before he went to Calvary? He what? He prayed. Prayer is the key in 2023. Say it with me. Prayer is the key for 2023. So that's the first major impact move we see in the text. They were going to pray. Things happen when God's children pray. Major move number two, we see it in the verse two of this third chapter. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. Here's the major move number two, positioning. Position yourself where God has no excuse but to bless you. Now, this man was not in church, but at least he was at church. At least he was in position for a miracle to take place in his life. Some people are trying to live their life and their dream and their careers out of position. I don't care how intelligent you are, intelligent you are, I don't care how uh, important your job is or, or, or how good you are, you need to know that in order for you to be the best that you can be, you need to be positioned in such a way that you give God no excuse not to bless you. If he had been, if he had been begging uh, in front of Walmart, if he had been begging maybe down by Costco, if he had been begging outside the football stadium, he, he would have missed his breakthrough. But he was right positioned, right at church. Even though he's not in church, he was in a place where he could be reached by the miraculous power of God. They say when it comes to real estate that there are three important things to consider. What are they? 
location, location, location. But when it comes to be blessed by God, there are three things you got to consider. What are they? Location, location, location. If you want God to bless you, you better snuggle up and get close to God. Have I got a witness in this place? He is in position because he was, amen, he was at church. And, and even though he wasn't yet in church, he was in a place where God, amen, could bless him. So many people miss their blessings and their breakthrough because they are out of position. Get closer to God in 2023. Get in position and stay there. Don't, don't say, well, my, my New Year's resolution is to read my Bible more. My New Year's resolution is to pray more. I'm going to start going to church more. No, listen, that's great. But when you get there, stay there. Stay in position so that God can bless you. As I close, I... I, I, I'm, I'm going to deal with this a little bit more next week, but, but that's, it's so critical. I can't say, church, we have to stay in position. Why does God bless our church family? It's because through our prayer life and through the way we live and how we treat each other, it's because we are in position. Amen. We're at a place where God has no excuse, amen, not to bless us. You know, Lionel Richie took an old hymn and turned it into a love song. The church sang, nearer my God to thee. Lionel took and made a song talking about just to be close to you. Now, Lionel is singing to a girl, but I love the words because, oh, I wish I had. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just to be. To. Yeah. Just for a moment, God. Just for an hour. Come on, y'all. Just to. to yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah. You know, I've been through so many changes in my life. Oh, God. Uh, I, I, I've been up real high where I, I, I thought I didn't need anybody. Uh, then again, I, I've been down real low. Uh, oh, so, but no one in my life, and I thought no one needed me. Uh, and, uh, oh, Lord, I found that material things, uh, I thought I had so much value. Oh, God, didn't really mean anything at all. I was a lonely man. Oh, a man with no direction and no purpose, no one to love and no one to love me. Oh, God, then you came into my life. Ah, oh, you made my jagged edges smooth. You made my direction so clear. You saw, God, you became my purpose and my reason for living. Yeah, oh, I, oh Lord, you see, you're my heart, you're my soul, you're my strong inspiration. Oh, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody want to say it with me? So, God, in 2023, I want you to do something. Take my hand. We'll go through the year together. Yeah. Take my hand. We'll pray together, God. Oh, yeah. Come on. 
Lord, I can't do this without you now. No, no, but never. Oh, never. Oh, never. Oh, Lord. Oh. If you just knew my story, oh, how the Lord brought me from the Red Hills of North Carolina. Oh, Lord. I had a skin disease and nobody wanted to be around me. But the Lord heard my cry, came to see about me. Oh, I remember when I was 11 years old, I heard the preacher say, boy, you need to walk with God. Oh, I thought I could make it by myself, but oh, but God spoke to my heart. He said, take my hand, plans will rule together. Oh yeah, take We'll experience life together, oh yeah. Come on, y'all. Take my hand. Oh, we'll walk together, yeah, forever. Oh, forever. Oh, just to be close. If you believe that today, stand on your feet. If you want to get close, oh, for one moment, just for one hour. Everybody, come on, just to be. Tell him, come on, tell him. God, I want to be close to you. Hey, forever. Forever. God, we need you now. Our church family, we want you just to take our hand. Take our hand. Hands will walk with you forever, Lord. Take our hands. We can't make it without you, Lord. Oh, no. Take my We'll be together, yeah, yeah, forever. Oh, forever. Oh, yeah. 